When we're conducting a hypothesis test to see if two categorical variables are independent, we're going to walk through the same six steps that we always walk through for a hypothesis test. But let's take a look at a few things to set up the hypothesis test first, and then we'll look at an example. In the first step of the hypothesis test, we are going to define the hypotheses. And for a hypothesis test for independent, the no hypothesis and alternative hypothesis are actually more of a sentence than an equation. The no hypothesis is that the variables are independent. In other words, one has no influence on the other. And the alternate hypothesis is that the variables are dependent. In other words, the value of one variable will impact the probability that we get a value of the other variable. The second thing about these hypothesis tests, as we draw our picture, these are going to be a chi-squared distribution. And similar to how we tested for goodness of fit, these are always going to be a right tail test. Because as the variables become more and more dependent, the chi-squared gets larger and larger because the expected value gets further and further away from the observed value. So if that's the case, how do we calculate the test statistic? Well, the test statistic is, as I mentioned, a chi-squared. And it follows the exact same formula we saw in goodness of fit of the observed minus the expected squared all over the expected. And when we calculate our p-value, we'll use the same Excel command of equals chi-squared dot dist dot rt, because it's always a right tail. And then we'll do the chi-squared value followed by the degrees of freedom. Now, when we have a test for independence, we're going to have some type of contingency table with rows and columns. To find the degrees of freedom, it's actually a multiplication problem where we take the number of rows minus 1, and we multiply by the number of columns minus 1. And as we do that, don't count the totals. Don't count the total row or column. Really, we're looking at the number of categories in each direction. So one less the number of categories, that became the rows, and one less the number of columns, categories, and multiply those together to get the degrees of freedom. Let's take a look at how this setup helps us run a hypothesis test for independence. For example, in the prior video, we took a look at student type and hours of community service done. We want to know, are student type, and remember we classified them as community college students, university students, and non-students. And hours of community service And remember, we put those into categories as well. We said 1 to 3 hours, 4 to 6 hours, and 7 to 9 hours. Our student type and hours of community service independent. If alpha equals 0.05. Well, let's run through the same six steps we always run through for our hypothesis test. For our hypotheses, our null hypothesis, as we test for independence, is just that, that the variables are independent. The alternate hypothesis is that the variables are dependent. 
And so if we were to draw a picture of this situation, because we know it's a chi-squared distribution, and it's always in the right tail, And then we'll look at finding our test statistic. Our test statistic is chi-squared. And remember that chi-squared is equal to the sum of the observed minus the expected squared divided by the expected. And we're going to do that on Excel because it's much quicker to do. In our previous video, we already looked at our data. We found the totals by using the equal sum column. We found the expected values by taking a look at multiplying the row total times the column total divided by the overall total. And then we put dollar signs in the denominator and put those same dollar signs in front of those same characters, E5, in the numerator so that we could drag our formulas across and down. To calculate our chi-squared, I'm going to create a third table to find our chi-squared values. Again, I'll copy the labels, 4 to 6 hours and 7 to 9 hours. We've got community college, university, and neither students. And then in the first row, first column, we're going to say equals, and we'll type in that chi-squared formula. Open a parentheses. We'll click the observed community college 1 to 3 minus the expected community college 1 to 3. Close the parentheses. And with Shift-6, I can get a caret to square it. And then I can divide by the expected value, clicking that expected value again. When I hit Enter, it calculates that I'm 4.06 off from expected. Clicking that dot in the bottom right corner, I can then drag the formula across and down to figure out what those individual pieces are for my chi-squared sum. To get my total chi-squared statistic, I need to add those values together. I will say equals sum, open a parentheses, and click and drag to select all of those values. When I hit Enter, I get 12.99. That is my chi-squared value. While I'm here, let's also find the p-value. The p-value is equal to chi-squared dot distribution dot right tail, open a parentheses. I can click the chi-squared value, comma, and then my degrees of freedom. Remember, the degrees of freedom is the number of rows minus 1. So there were three rows, gives us 2, times the number of columns minus 1. There were three columns. I can type in 2 and close the parentheses. I could have also done the 2 times 2 to get 4 in my head, but this really shows where the numbers come from. Hitting tab, I end up with my p-value of 0 0.01132. Let's go back to our paper. From Excel, we found out that our test statistic then was 12.99. And D, my p-value, we found by typing in equals the chi-squared dot dist dot right tail and the 12.99 comma. For our degrees of freedom, it was the number of columns minus 1 times the number of rows minus 1, which was 2 times 2, which equals 4. So 4 was the degrees of freedom. And that gave me 0 0.0113 for my p-value, which leads to a decision. For my decision, the p-value was equal to 0.0113. The alpha was equal to 0.05. My p-value is smaller, so my decision is to reject the null hypothesis. We can interpret that decision then by focusing on the alternate hypothesis which we did reject. We did successfully reject the null hypothesis. We got the alternate we wanted. So we can say there is sufficient evidence at the alpha equals 0.05 level 
to conclude the alternate, that the variables are dependent. But let's put that in context to conclude that student type and hours of community service are dependent. And that's how we conduct a test for independence.